the thing that's going to truly unlock the exploration of space is going to be someone figuring out how to make money from it. That up until this point, the, the space race back in the 60s and 70s was, as you said, really about politics, about showing that you really had a more capable nuclear arsenal than your opponent. And, and that is not a long-term sustainable business model, right? I can, I can bring about a more efficient and complete apocalypse than you can. Um, so that, you know, d- does not for a long-term strategy make. But now there are all these companies that are potentially looking to mine asteroids, bring resources back from space, and even construct things in space. And then you've got other ideas here, space tourism, et cetera. So once one of those, especially space mining, right? You go and you harvest metric tons of platinum off of an asteroid and bring it back to earth. You've made that venture profitable and that will create a gold rush, um, a space gold rush until we get those, that commercialization of space actually starting to happen, then the whole process isn't really going to take off. So that's, that's, I think what we're waiting for is somebody to make more money than they put into it. And that's what it's all, always comes down to. They're always yeah. to the economic model. Talk a little bit more about the implications of asteroid mining on our planet and future. Well, I mean, there's a big part to this, right? Which is that we planet earth is the best place in the universe that we know of for life. It could very well be that it's the only place in the entire universe that, that, has, that has life, that has trees and birds and insects and, and bears and all this kind of stuff. And, and the rest of the universe could very well just be atoms and molecules collected together into various forms. And yet we are polluting our environment. We are, we are ruining the water. We are filling the air with various gases. We are ruining the landscapes and we are causing extinctions here on earth. So it really makes sense to shift all of that heavy manufacturing and polluting off of the earth and out into space. So I think from just a pure, like, let's try and make earth do this one job as best it possibly can is an important reason to go to space. Now, of course, you can't afford it. So, so there are resources out in space that are dramatically greater than anything we have here on Earth. Individual asteroids, small asteroids, just tens of meters, hundreds of meters across are going to have more of various kinds of precious elements, gold, platinum, palladium, iridium, than have ever been mined here on Earth. And there's ways that you could bring some of those materials back to Earth, or even just leave those materials back in space, right? Don't go back into a gravity well. Take an asteroid, dismantle it, turn it into uh, solar harvesting, uh, space-based mining systems, ways to create you know, manufacturing factories, manufacture finished goods in space, and then bring that stuff back to earth once it's done. So I think there's, and again, we don't really know what the best situation is, but we know that we can't keep using up all the resources on earth and, and living in our own pollution. And we know that all those materials are out there in space ready for us to use. And hopefully we will figure out this, this best balance point between those two. I would say that the thing that's going to be the most useful for us to learn is how to live in space itself, for us to live in the zero gravity of, of, of space or microgravity, right? To live at the Lagrange points, to build those gigantic L4 colonies, rotating cylinders that are, that are out in space where you can control all of the factors. You can control the gravity. You can control the amount of radiation that gets through and the environment that you're, that you're living in. I think those will be a lot more exotic and fun to live in than potentially one of these, these other worlds like the moon or, or Mars. But you know, everyone gets to choose where they wanna live. Um, and I think going into gravity wells is a big problem. You wanna deliver material to the surface of the moon, you're looking at $100,000 per kilogram right now to just send material to the lunar surface. It's expensive. And then once you're down on the lunar surface, if you want to get that stuff back out into space, you've got to spend more money to get out of the gravity well. Because even the moon has a significant gravity well. 
build in space and just build space stations and make them bigger and better over time. When it comes to sort of what I've been able to do as a career, I think it's, I think it's, it's important to show up every day and, and do the work and you'd be amazed what you can accomplish over a long period of time. If you're patient and you're willing to work really hard and try to make a difference in, in terms of, of space, I think you don't have to, I think things are great. Things are better now than they've ever been. This is absolutely a Renaissance and a, uh, an amazing time to be interested and involved in space exploration and don't let the haters get you down saying that people aren't interested in this kind of thing anymore. It is awesome and getting better every day. You're definitely on the upswing. There's a lot of interest and excitement. Where's the best place for people to find you, say hey, and learn more about what you do? Sure, yeah. So there's a couple of things that I'm really proud of. Obviously, uh, there's Astronomy Cast, which is the podcast I do with Dr. Pamela Gay. You can get that wherever fine podcasts are made. Uh, I do this video series on YouTube called The Guide to Space, which I'm really proud of with Chad Weber, who's my, my editor. Um, and then, of course, I'm, I'm at Universe Today or at F. Kane on all the various social platforms and of course our website universe today